2.6 resultants. Resultants. Um, we've looked at thus far. We've looked at force, moment, and couple, and couple moments. But now, what we want to look at in this section is what if we've got a large number of forces? Well, a large or just a number of forces, and we want to get a resultant of all these quantities. Okay, um, we would like to reduce the system to its simplest form. So for example, you've got a, a body here and you've got force one, force two, and force three. We want to reduce this to its simplest form so that either we just have a an equivalent single force acting on the body or we could have a force and a couple. Okay, we'll see that. So wh why can we do that? We can do that because, again, the body is rigid. And as long as we don't alter the external effect on the rigid body, then this is valid. So we can take all these forces that are acting on the body, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and we can wave a magic wand, which is looks something like this, and... and and we'll we'll look at it later and replace all of these with a single force that has the same effect same external effect on the body as all those forces okay i hope that makes sense so eventually we get we will replace all these forces with a single resultant force r why do we want that because this R is the sum of the forces acting on the body. It's the same thing. And this is very helpful, right, when we are dealing either with equilibrium, because sum of the forces equals zero, which is, by the way, that's chapter three. Okay? Equilibrium is chapter three. So we want to get all these forces and replace them with a, a, the, the sum of the forces or a resultant force and in equilibrium this is equal to zero and when um, when we're dealing with dynamics that is not equal to zero right some of the forces equals ma okay anyway that's that's the the, the basic idea here um, I think that's enough I will go into the details of how to do this in the next one